Welcome back to Horror Recaps. My name is Freddy, and in a moment, you're going to listen to a frightening tale narrated by me. Beware, fear awaits you. Eden is a young orphan living in the Rylestone Children's Home in the struggling Nebraska farm town of Rylestone. One day, when she's playing outside, she encounters a sullen orphan teenager named Boyd, who appears to be possessed after exiting the cornfield. The two have a strange exchange as he promises that no one will ever hurt Eden again. He then grabs a knife and walks into the children's home, where he proceeds to kill every adult in the facility. In an attempt to subdue Boyd, the local police place a hose inside the building and pump it with a dangerous cow anesthetic known as Halothane. But in this futile attempt, they inadvertently kill 15 orphans held hostage inside. Following this, Eden ends up being the sole survivor of the orphanage massacre and is adopted by the local priest, Pastor Penny. She now spends a lot of time in the cornfields with other children who treat her as their leader. A couple of years later, the town of Rylestone is in dire straits. The town, which heavily relied on corn for its industry, now suffers economically, leaving the townspeople feeling desperate. So, in such desperation, they partner with a few corporate agriculture companies who advise them to put all kinds of chemicals into the soil. Unfortunately, the corn-dependent town of Rylestone is driven into the ditch because the corn, rather than thriving, is covered in fungus and dying due to the same toxic chemicals. We are then introduced to Bolin, or Bo, and her younger brother Cecil as they are roaming around the cornfield. Bo tells her brother that she has been accepted to a college in Boston. However, Cecil is not particularly happy to hear this and gets upset, claiming that he'll be stuck forever in this sad, dying town. As the two are talking, they are interrupted by Eden, who leads them to a mock execution of a boy named Wally for not caring for his old dog. The children then bizarrely force Wally to walk the plank and jump from a great height. Cecil also joins Eden and the other children at the worrisome mock execution. But before the kids can continue, they are interrupted by Calder, Bo's friend, who has parked his car in the field to hide some weed he has been growing. Calder orders the children to leave after discovering they wrecked the window glass and busted the gas tank. Meanwhile, Eden instructs one of the kids to light a matchstick to burn Wally as the trial's final act. However, Bo urges them against it because the air is heavy with grain dust, which is highly flammable. Afterwards, Bo catches up with Calder and sees bruises on his face. Calder reveals that it happened when he was defending his younger brother, Cal, from their abusive father. He then mentions he has plans to make some money selling weed and eventually escape from Rylestone. Through their conversation, it is also revealed that the town's corn crops have been failing due to a fungus, causing a great economic loss on the town. Then, as she walks past the cornfield on her way home, she notices something moving inside of it, but doesn't give it much thought. Later that day, Bo's father, who's one of the town's leaders, holds a meeting and assembles Rylestone's adults in the community hall to discuss their town's dying corn business. He warns the farmers that they are left with only two options in this matter. According to him, there's a long-term plan that involves fixing the soil, but also comes with a question in terms of success. Then he offers an alternate, short-term plan that involves destroying the crops, but guarantees subsidies from the government for not growing corn. So he convinces other farmers that their best course of action is to immediately raise their cornfields, and he urges them to vote for this decision. Meanwhile, his own daughter, Bo, feels otherwise. She questions her father as to why they're giving up when they can try to reverse the course. Moreover, she urges all of them to correct their past mistakes rather than make new ones that will again lead nowhere. However, the adults are hearing none of it. 
Desperate, they are looking out for the nearest lifeboat, with no regard for what they will leave behind for their children after this action also fails. Hence, the adults are all for the destruction of the crops, because that's going to bring some money into the town from the government. Bo seems to have inspired Eden to speak up for herself and the other children who treat her as their leader. So she interrupts to plead for the children to have a say in the crop's fate. They outright disagree with the adults' decision, as every other discussion has been taken by the adults without the children's permission. Therefore, the children don't want yet another unfavorable decision to be made without their consent, making them responsible for their unfortunate future. But the children are forced to leave the hall in humiliation as the adults mock them and treat their ideas as absurd. Following this, Eden goes to the cornfield and cries for its fate, when suddenly an unseen entity made of cornstalks cradles her. She then gathers the other children and begins to hatch a plan to prevent the adults from destroying the cornfields. Later that night, as Cecil walks through the town, he sees many parents abusing their children behind closed doors. Eden suddenly approaches him and asks Cecil if he wants to join her and the other children, and he agrees. Back at Bo's home, she tries to convince her father not to go forward with the decision to destroy the crops, but her father refuses to hear anything that she has to say, claiming that it is over. Bo, on the other hand, is reluctant to give up on her town. So, after failing to appeal to her father to save the corn, she tells her friends Carly, Tanika, and Calder that she has talked to a famous reporter, Sheila Boyce, to come to their town and expose the corporate companies that caused their crops to fail. Bo's friends also agree to side with her on this mission. The next day, Bo notices a large hole near the field, and in it, she finds the town children including Eden. Moreover, she's alarmed when she discovers them painting cornstalk roots red with blood dripping from what appears to be a sacrificed animal. Bizarrely, Eden tells Bo that she's feeding the corn this way. Regardless of this, Bo still asks Eden to help her get all of the adults back to the community hall that night. She explains that a mock trial might convince everyone to change their minds about destroying the corn, and they agree to help her. Later that night, Bo and Cecil handcuff their parents while they sleep, and they convince them to be calmly escorted to the mock trial. However, when Bo, Cecil, and Calder arrive with Bo's parents at the town hall, they are shocked to see no one but Eden and Cal sitting in their footsteps. Bo then asks about Sheila Boyce, but Eden tells her that the reporter never showed up, so the kids conducted the trial by themselves. Then, she steps inside the town hall only to find Calder and Cal's abusive father hanging by the rope. Unfortunately, by the time Calder and Bo try to help him, he suffocates and dies. Later, Bo realizes that despite agreeing to her plans earlier, Eden had something else planned all along. Eden led the other children to exact their revenge on the adults by killing several of them vandalizing the houses and setting their properties on fire. Then she makes Bo, her parents, and Calder follow her through the burning town and leads them to the police station. And upon reaching there, Eden imprisons Bo's parents along with the rest of the town's people. Following this, the adults request that Eden and the other children release them, but Eden turns a deaf ear to their pleas. As everyone begins to panic, Calder boldly tries to intervene in this matter, but two kids swing a baseball bat at him and beat him to death. The children then proceed to pump halothane into the station, just like the adults did to the children in the orphanage. Once unconscious, they are taken to the large hole near the field and buried alive using a bulldozer. Bo is horrified to see her mother dead but vows to help her father, who is still kept in prison. And while Carly and Tanika head over to the nearby town to seek help, Bo feigns being supportive of the children to win their trust. Later, Bo talks to Eden about her plans and she reveals that she intends to sacrifice all the adults to a creature called He Who Walks. This creature lives in the cornfields and cared for Eden when she was wandering alone after her friends were massacred at the children's home. He Who Walks demands blood 
and she will happily serve up the blood of the townspeople who betrayed her and the other children with their selfishness and greed. She mentions he who walks being sick, possibly by the degradation of the soil, and needs to be fed. She further confesses her hatred for all adults and says that only he who walks ever loved her in this entire town. Following this, the children, along with Bo, return to the prison cell where they brutally murder the pastor for being a sinner. Meanwhile, the remaining adults, including Bo's father, are tricked into going inside the cornfields. Bo, who doesn't believe in the entity, quietly urges her father to run inside the fields and get help. Unfortunately, those adults end up being served as prey for the monster. Now, after releasing the adults, the children head inside, where Eden preaches about forming a new world free of adults. Furthermore, she stresses spreading their message into the world and making it right again. Meanwhile, Bo is horrified to see that the children have kidnapped the reporter Sheila Boyce and intend to sacrifice her. Then, Eden and her gang take Sheila to a barn where Bo sees Carly and Tanika brutally killed, revealing that they never got out of town. She then calls on the maze monster to take Sheila, but he does not appear, so Bo takes the opportunity to grab a machete and hold Eden, threatening the children to stay back. But before Bo can act, a terrifying growl is heard from inside the cornfields, and a giant green monster made out of corn stalks appears. He then grabs Sheila and drags her into the cornfield, only to rip her in half later. After killing everyone over the age of 17, the children turn to Bolin and knock her unconscious. When Bo wakes up, the children douse her in tractor fuel to burn her alive, since she'll eventually become an adult, and hence, a threat to the kids. Just when Eden is about to light the match and kill Bo, she reminds her of the grain dust, which will cause the entire place to burn. Eden also agrees, but instead orders the children to chop off Bo. Luckily, she manages to make a run for it, thereby sprinkling that fuel throughout the field. Inside the field, Bo finds her father's body slowly being eaten by the crops, suggesting he fell prey to the monster. As she breaks down, she has a chilling encounter with the monster. The monster rushes after her and begins to strangle her, but Bo manages to grab a machete nearby and stab it. She then finds Calder's car in the middle of the field and uses it to escape even though the engine is leaking. The car abruptly stops at one point and when Bo tries to drive away, Eden catches up to her. She then sternly orders Bo to get out of the car to sacrifice her with the cattle gun. Now, Bo asks her if she can have one last cigarette, and when Eden agrees, the two get out of the car. But just as Eden is about to shoot her, she uses the car cigarette lighter to set fire to the dripping fuel from the engine. Instantly, the fuel catches fire and spreads out to the field. The maze monster, who is also engulfed in flames, comes for Eden, but she willingly goes into the burning field to save the entity. Meanwhile, Bo shields the remaining children from fire as they all wait for help to arrive. Later, Bo walks on the scorched lands and finds a flower that Eden wore on her hand. But when she proceeds to pick up the flower in her hand, it suddenly disappears. Just then, Bo turns around and sees Eden, who is incarnated as the new He Who Walks monster and mimicking his monstrous plant-like appearance. Finally, the monstrous Eden laughs at Bo and tells her that nothing ever dies in the cornfield before devouring her completely. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.